I think we should watch, you know, at least a good portion of this uh, and talk our way through it. it. I have many notes on it. Uh, and uh, but I think it's quite revealing. Now, again, this is not personal for me against Roland Martin or uh, uh, um, uh, Brother Hope. Uh, uh, Jay, what's his name? Um, where is my notes? Hope, Hope, Brother something. Hope. Hope yeah. for now. We'll, we'll get to it. Uh, yeah, he's got a last name. But, I forget what it is. Uh, um, the gr uh, his group uh, is no, called Hope Something. Hope Something. Hope. Uh, the, the the yeah, we'll see it in a second because yeah. it's yeah. figured prominently. So it's not personal, but this is, I think, part of what leads us to the confusing economic analyses that people end up with and that continue to inhibit, I think, our broader, uh, uh, you know, uh, analytical ability and movements. But let's just. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, of course, uh, welcome to our marketplace segment, uh, sponsored by uh, Next Door. This is where we. Okay, so let's just stop right there because he says it real quick. He says it real quick and it shows up on the screen real quick and then they move on. And yeah. as he starts to announce that this is the segment where they teach us how to do business and financial literacy. So sponsored I need to stop it there real quick. Door. So sponsored by Next Door. So I was like, what? Honestly, I'm late to this. So I was like, what is Next Door? All right. Oh, you don't know um, what Next Door? Oh, I, I did not know Next Door. I yeah. did not know Next Door. So, so. Uh, it's like, uh, it's like social to, media, it's like social media for homeowners, <laughs> right? So people will have to forgive me for you know for for not having a smoother platform to work with here, uh, uh, being able to share more than one thing. But but uh, yes, it is uh, specifically, and I have it written down here. Next door, which was founded in 2008 and premiered stateside in October of uh, 2011, is currently available in 11 countries across the globe. A location-based app. Users that sign up are required to submit their real names and street addresses, minus exact house number if, if users prefer ex extra privacy, and assign to a neighborhood group based on that information. The company plans to go public. They just announced they're, they're, uh, they've gone public in, uh, let's see, I believe this is the, oh, yep, this is the story here. Next door to go public. Uh, last month was announced in a $4.3 billion special acquisitions company merger as CEO looks towards expansion. Um, uh, the company plans to go public in 2021, joining other notable companies having their IPO this year. Controversy, though, has surrounded the app for a handful of years now, being criticized for enabling their users to racially profile others by using the app. So that was one thing I found that was interesting that that people apparently um let's see do, 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 keep that in, keep that in mind keep that in mind that point that you make it in mind I want people to keep that in mind Yeah uh this story I thought was interesting it talks a little bit about that the rise of fear based social media like next door citizen and now amazon neighbors uh, and one of the points it makes is that while violent crime is at its lowest rate in decades, uh, this is in 2019, at least, because I think there's been an uptick since. But uh, you wouldn't know that from the crop of increasingly popular social media apps that are forming, uh, next door being among them. But it was a hotbed for racial stereotyping that forced the company to rewrite its its software and policies. All right. So that was that I thought was interesting to, to have come across. Is there a particular reason you wanted us to make note of that point or you want or you want us to come back to that or we'll, we'll or, come back to it but okay, there's okay, a reason cool. <laughs> okay um sarah fryer the former chief financial officer of the prospering uh financial services company square took over as ceo of next door in october of 2018 following the retirement of co-founder nira nirav talia talia uh, public entities such as police departments as well as local and state governments have partnered with uh, um, uh, next door as well. So, which I, another point I thought was interesting was that that police um, agencies have uh, you know signed on um, uh, to use this app. All right. Uh, okay. So this is what I was reading from. This was the page I was reading from uh, as it relates to next door. Uh, and then I wanted to also show let me get this page to load up 
Um, oh, my bad. One second, everybody. This is, uh, hold on. I didn't have it set up. I thought I had it all. Yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. Let me pull up this one other page once. Um, oh, man. I think my browser's freezing up. Um, ah, give me a second. Give me one second because I do want to pull this up. Dang, I thought I had it all set up. I keep doing that. All right, here we go. Do, do, do. By the way, everybody, hit the like button, share button, subscribe, join while we're waiting here quickly uh, for this to, to get itself together. Um, because shout out to the uh, birds in the background over yeah, there. Yeah, like, share, subscribe, join. You hear the birds? You hear the birds? Yeah, my tree line streets. Yeah, man. The uh, mean the streets of Columbia streets. that you were showing Let's us see. earlier. I'm trying to tell you, man, people, people, you know, they don't, they don't know. Well, you know, I don't live over there anymore. You know what I mean? You know, right. You of know, course, you so, moved up uh, to the east side. Uh, I'm in a little bit of a to the to the well west side that was the east side we 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 we, oh, we moved because all the black people uh, usually in the east side at least around here in these parts the southeast side in North well that's what it was that's that was the east side that's what i'm saying mm -hmm. that neighborhood was the east side the uh, east side boys so you like little john and the east side boys it's just like that it's just like that we are <laughs> we are it is it is it is just like that um all right so this is what i was wanted to get to here and um, let's see. All right, because this is the team at next door. All right, this is, uh, you know, these are the folks that put together, this is the new CEO. Uh, uh, one story I saw heralded her as the, the, the wealthiest um, woman uh, in Ireland, I think was what they were mm -hmm. saying, or the most, something like that. Uh, or to come out of Ireland, something like that. Uh, but here we go. Keep scrolling down, and here mm -hmm. we go. A next door partner is John Hope Bryant. Okay, uh, that's his full name. Uh, CEO of Operation Hope Inc., which we will come back to shortly. But I just wanted to sort of situate us right off the top because Roland Martin just in, he, he said it quick, and the, the thing showed up on the screen quick that next door was sponsoring. By. That mm -hmm. that segment is sponsored, but this financial literacy, where as he's gonna say, we got to teach people how to, you know, all right. Um, this is this is the team, and and John Hope Bryant is one member of this team. Okay, so uh just as as we're keeping things in mind, uh you know, that's just among among them. So let's come back to the to the to the video here and and uh pick up where we left off. Of course, focus on uh, black owned businesses uh, every single uh, week. And so uh, normally we have the stinger, we'll play that uh, after, for our next segment. Uh, and so um, uh, there's some news that came out, Will Smith and uh, Jay-Z. Uh, it was announced they were investing $165 million uh, into a company uh, that deals with um, homes, that deal for, for, for renters. But what was interesting about that uh, is that uh, a lot of people on social media took to social media and they were uh, highly critical uh, of hmm. this decision and sort of shook my head and said, well, why? What's the deal here? Uh, I was talking <laughs> to my man, John Hope Bryant, uh, founder of Operation Hope, and he said, you know what, let's talk about this uh, so we can really explain to folks what business is really about and how really folks actually break it down. Jones is right now. Mm -hmm. So, John, y'all just don't understand of this investment and what it means uh, and, and what really uh, I won't say it ticked you off, but let's just say caused you to say, mm, we need to actually have a real conversation in black America about business. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. So first of all, I love you, love you, Roland. Honored to be a supporter of the channel. And I mean that in a material way and not just aspirationally. I encourage everybody to do the same. Was was lovely to see a black owned company as one of your sponsors. More companies uh, need to do that. Uh, mainstream companies, certainly minority owned companies. We, we need to it, buy our own block and invest in our own product. Um, so I, again, I, I thought that was interesting because before I, I heard, this, I watched this before I looked up next door mm -hmm. uh, because I thought he was promoting this. His as own. His, yeah. 
as both a, first of all it's, the, the segment's being promoted both as as um one promoting black business and black business development and then it sounded like Bryant was saying there that it was important that we support black businesses like Roland Martins with black businesses and almost as if next door is a black owned business and and it's definitely not uh so i again i just thought that was interesting you know we we in my book up from nothing you know i've talked a lot about this the different mentalities you have a winning mentality a thriving mentality a surviving mentality and a spectator mentality <laughs> and this is like spectators like on another thing because right. you look at this That's investment it. And, and it's really two different conversations. You read most of the press, and it's Will Smith and Jay Z have invested as part of a and a rent a home company. Okay, uh, I actually think, my God, two brothers formerly from the hood have a venture capital firm in one hand and a private equity firm on the other. <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, isn't that a beautiful thing that we want? Don't we want that? <laughs> and they made their money legal and investing it. Uh, uh, likewise, that's what um, we want to do. We want to be venture capitalists. That's great. That's it. Folks on Twitter, at least where I saw, including a very notable person who I think is a historian, par excellence, but uh, maybe we need she, we need to talk about financial literacy a little bit. Uh, went in on on Will and Jay Z, and I can't figure out why. Uh, it's first of all, I guess we were upset. This was a white owned company. Well, ah, the company there it never is. said. They were anything other. <laughs> they never said they were here to say. Oh, right. He's talking about Landis. It's a rent-to-own yeah, company, right? Uh, and they're, it appears trying to do uh, affordable housing for low-income uh, people. There was an immediate assumption that this was a scam, that poor people are going to be, and poor black people are going to be abused. So you have this discussion in black America that's very, actually, cynical. And then if you look at all the rest of the press, I'm encouraging everybody to watching this, don't trust me, do your own search. The rest of the press is just pretty straight ahead. A couple of things, Roland. First of all, it wasn't just 100. This is not Will and Jay putting in $165 million, as has been reported by our folks. They were part of an investment group. Right. Uh, number two, yeah. Number two, there's no, there's no bad reputation. And by the way, I think this company probably took a page out of one of my books for a company that I own that does something similar to what he's talking about. And I'm saying as somebody who actually should be a little aggrieved by it, Bravo! I, I'm I'm happy that he got the investment and he's 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 doing this thing. If it helps our people now, if they are found to be scamsters, if this company is found to be legitimate, we should be all over them like a cheap suit. But at the moment, it's just the perception that this company was doing rent to own, and that somehow Jay Z and see, but that so so I would just want to just quickly say there, and I think I'm having a connection issue for some unbelievably unknown reason, but but. Um, the suggestion that this sort of operation could be anything other than a scam is part of the flawed interpretation here in Lens. That the idea that that uh, that any venture capital investment in rent to own could be um, seen as a collective good for Black people is itself yeah. the flaw here. So it's They're not doing that, so, so even. Yeah, that's and what, even setting that's what they it, do. but it, but even setting it up with the that it could potentially be good, uh, that this company could potentially be good is is itself a false frame, I think. But manipulating our people, I, I actually I can't figure it out. So here, so here, so here's a tweet that you're talking about. So this is the tweet right here that Nicole Hannah Jones sent out on August first. Um, the story from the root: Jay Z and Will Smith invest in company. I'm to telling you, she got this from folks. me go from renters to homeowners. She tweets, credit counseling is not what will take low income renters to homeowners, wealth will. All this program does is charge struggling people additional fees for being poor, which is what every other predatory lender does. Now, that's now, it got that particular tweet, uh, uh, 3,000 retweets and uh, 16,100 likes. Now, th this is what the story actually says. Landis Technologies raised $165 million to purchase 1,000 homes. 
It says the company purchases, the, the, according to Bloomberg, the company purchases a house. But isn't that even worse, by the way? The, in terms of even what Brian is arguing, isn't what, what Martin just clarified there even worse? Because it's not all this venture capital coming from these two brothers. It's 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 They are part of a much larger pool. And I'm not even sure we're clear on how much they actually kicked in. Am I... It, does they, that make sense? They, they they are they are fronts, uh, they're screeners, they're protection, because mm. black people are going to look at them and say, "Oh, these are great guys. We like these guys." And so we're going to be just like just like people. Uh, it's like we were talking about earlier. If a Democrat does it, and people look the other way. If if Jay Z and Will Smith do it, two black people that are that are held in high esteem by m the majority of black folks all over the world, really. Uh, if they're part of it, then it's gonna it's gonna face less scrutiny. And if it and to the extent that it does face scrutiny, then they will have people that they, you know, that that are pretty much in that same category in terms of black people uh, or, or at least aspiring to be in that same category as Will Smith and and uh, and Jay-Z to defend it, which is what we're looking at right now. Mm. It to the client until they can qualify for a mortgage. Until, the client can buy it back mm. at a predetermined price up to two years after the initial acquisition. As part of its service, Landis provides coaching for clients on how to manage their finances to improve their credit and save the amount they need for a down payment. Landis sets rents equivalent to its carrying cost on the home. It also charges a fee on top of the value of the property at the time of its initial purchase. I got to stop it again here quickly. One, um, I forgot to mention that the uh, the public offer that Net next door uh, uh, just made um, quote is going is going to bring a lot bring in a lot of proceeds six hundred and eighty six million dollars of gross proceeds on a real blue chip set of investors. So the blue chip set of investors into next door just made a whole lot of money with this thing going public. Uh, so, and by blue chip, they don't mean the retail investors like who who would comprise mostly be, be comprise which would be the group in which most black and regular other so called investors would be the retail mm -hmm. side. They're not blue chip. They don't have the the. the however hundreds of thousands of stock or whatever whatever they just have a small piece get a small piece but the blue chippers made mm -hmm. a, a bundle off of that and the other thing is is that uh having watched this happen with with my own mother uh the process they're describing here is is a scam of uh reverse mortgaging where where in for the promise of we'll cover you know we'll we'll give you the value of the property up front which is not even happening here uh uh we will uh, once once the place is paid off you have two years uh to to pay back everything to re regain the full ownership of the property most people can never afford to do that and therefore lose the property. So it's really a scam to get people out of uh, a particularly old or or a vulnerable people out of uh, what little property they have. And that's exactly what it sounds like they're offering here, saying that we'll we'll cover it for you. We'll buy the property for you, allow you to rent it from us. And then in two years, if you can come up with the money to pay us, you know, for the value of the property, we'll let you buy it. Uh, and that's the reason why the reason why a lot of people put their bills and other things in their children's names and asking you to put can I can I use your you know your child's name or could you is because a lot of them go into debt uh, from rent, rent to own you know schemes that 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 right. don't have anything to do with housing they they go <laughs> so so how is this going to be any different? That's right. That's exactly it. Client isn't ready to buy the home after two years. Landis may offer them more time or sell the property. Now, that's the no, we'll stop it right there. Landis um, may, according to the company, they hope to convert uh, uh, yeah, 80%. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh, I think, am I lagging again? Yeah, uh, we so. may both be. Yeah. Uh, no, you're there, you're there. Okay, I'm probably the one lagging. Okay, well, that, that, that he said it real fast, but Landis may, may take the phone back. That, that may, when you're talking contractually, and I'm not a lawyer, I don't play one on. YouTube, 
but we got we can check this with brother Kamal. But my understanding of May, when you have situations like this, that's a very broad word. It means it it, it, it can be interpreted all kinds of ways. And when they say they may do something, when it when it's to your detriment, that means that they will do it. <laughs> that's, that is what's going to happen. You know, for instance, slavery is abolished except for a punishment by crime. You, you, in other words, it may be reinstituted as a punishment by crime, which means it will be re reinstituted as a punishment by crime, except in this case, we're talking about wage or, or debt slavery. All of that. Right on. Percent of the people from renters into homeowners. So let's let's unpack this. Um, uh, Nicole says in her tweet, credit counseling is not what it will take low income renters to homeowners wealth will you absolutely disagree with that because that's exactly what operation hope does it helps people first but go ahead and explain it yeah i mean this is, i mean that is again she's brilliant she's a we, we all know her from the 1619 project she's she's a historic i don't want to disagree with her because i actually highly respect her i'm actually she's on my reading list for next week but on this point she's just wrong um if it makes her feeling any better i actually told Mr. Bill Gates, he was wrong two weeks ago <laughs> uh, at a meeting I saw him at. So I'm not discriminating. Th on this point, she's just respectfully incorrect. Uh, it is actually my story, Roland, as you well know, uh, that I got a financial literacy course in Compton, California. Banker came in my classroom, and I raised my hand at the second session and said, excuse me, sir, what do you do for a living, and how'd you get rich legally? <laughs> he said, I'm a banker, and I finance entrepreneurs. I said, sir, I don't know what an entrepreneur is, but if you finance them and it's legal, I'm going to be one. And that's who I am today after he gave me this, this incredible financial literacy course in home economics class. I now own 700 homes just under that from Atlanta and, and uh, to North Florida. I have a portfolio of businesses founded in Operation Hope. You know the rest of the story, employing a few, a few hundred people. Because, not because I have the money, uh, but because I had knowledge in my head about money. Mm. In fact, let me, let Roland, let's flip this. If all we do, why is he sweating so we much? Need, we, we don't need all this counseling thing. We just need money. Okay, I take all the money in the world, you and me, redistribute it to everybody in the world equally. Take the money from the top three percent, redistribute it to everybody equally. Uh, what will happen in three years? The top three percent will own all it all over again. If, if nothing else changes, I'll go one step. See, see, but this is the thing because he started with this nonsense about mind states. Uh, about mentalities mm -hmm. he can then say that that this transfer of wealth he's describing would take place because we're all idiots and we're not we're all financially illiterate but that's the exact opposite if he, he, he again going to the point earlier he starts with an accurate premise and then mm -hmm. reframes it so it can't be understood yes if you gave everybody everything you know gave redistributed the money out here equally and gave everybody an equal share without changing ownership without changing political power and all of that which is what is essential here then of course he's right all of the wealth will eventually be you know extracted back up to the top but mm -hmm. his argument is that that this isn't because of of ownership, political power, et cetera. This is because all of us have weak mentalities and don't know how to invest and don't know how to make money. And he it is, it's again, with, with a, the equally false premise that this, that capitalism is not a zero sum game, that there is a way for everybody to be equally rich uh, um, if they knew how to play the game. And, and so he is, I'm joking, but I'm, 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 I'm suggesting that he's part of his sweating here is that he knows he is working hard <laughs> to intellectually jump through so many hoops that don't make any sense uh, yeah. uh, to, 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 to conclude, to reach a conclusion that will ultimately support his own business, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, and the relationship that, that they both have with, with next door. So, well, you know, when you, buck, when you buck dancing, you, you know, it tends, it tends to, you know, uh, be, be quite taxing. What, what, what y'all were just talking about, um, the other day, Prince George's County, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so-called the wealthiest enclave of, of Negroes in the world, really, at this particular point. I think so. Yeah. And has been, uh, in, you know, uh, we may recall, ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, let's go back to 2008-09. A lot of well-educated Black folks in P Prince George's County, a lot of people who, who, who manage their portfolios well, many people have money in the stock market, all of that, good, good government jobs, uh, nice big three, four hundred thousand dollar at the time homes, which are probably almost you know 
definitely appreciated over this time. Many of those black people lost their homes. Why did they lose their home? Because they had subprime loans and they didn't realize that, uh, you know, it was they were going to be get, they, they could be subject to getting their homes taken away from them. Many of them disproportionately were black folk out there, well educated, financially literate and all of that. And because of the system that we live in, they were they lost their homes. I want you to hold that. Well, we'll come back to that and re restate that a, a little bit more uh, in just a second because he 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 encourages step further you, a reminder you of that. You stop and see a homeless guy on the side of the road. You want to help him because you won the lottery. All you do is give him a million bucks because you're got goodness in your heart. That's all you do. He'll be broke in six months because nothing changes here. Nothing's going to change. Here, that's it. Wealth is a mindset. He got a homeless mentality. Money, that's why he's homeless. Getting paid, getting that paper, getting that dollar. Want to make that money, which we are unfortunately, as black people, overly obsessed with. And building wealth, which is what you do in your sleep. Financial literacy helps you understand that. It also the last debate we had on your your great program. This debate about home ownership. We're focused on oh, black people. We don't own the home. The bank does. What are you talking about? Right, right. No, the yeah. bank owns the yeah. debt. And they only own a home if you default. You get the appreciation, the depreciation, which is good for your taxes. You write off, you get the write off on every mortgage payment. We can go on and on and on. This is just an, a lack of understanding. Then there's good debt and bad debt, as we talked about before. This so financial literacy is the one thing. All right. So 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 there again, he's he's this segment claims it's going to teach black people about black business and quote unquote financial literacy. And he just, ex he just expressed a wild, a wildly, uh, uh, poorly framed myth. So yes, again, he starts with an accurate premise. I, as a homeowner am able to do things beyond, uh, it is an oversimplification to simply say the bank owns my home and that I can do nothing, but it is an equally or a more oversimplification for him to argue that as a homeowner, uh, I could do things with appreciation and depreciation that will in some way, not only radically change my own already existing class position, but this is the crux that would help others in my community do the same. That somehow my ownership of, of a home uh, uh, or his ownership of 700 is somehow something that can be replicated and be used to the good of the entire community. It is also wildly inaccurate and misstates the, the uh, uh, power in home ownership, depending on what home you own, where you right. own it, what race you are when you own it, and what mm -hmm. commu what the, and the racial designation of your uh, neighborhood. All of that has, you know, so so to the point that you raised, and forgive me, everybody, for having to switch it out like this, but just as a quick reminder, uh, just one example from uh, uh, 2014, reminding of what happened in that last financial crisis, uh, the crisis in Black home ownership, and just as it says here, in 2005, three years before the Great Recession, the median Black household had a net worth of $12,124. Yes, this was far behind the median White household, which had a net worth of $134,992,000, but it was a huge improvement from previous decades <laughs> in which housing discrimination made wealth accumulation difficult, not impossible, da 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 But... By the official end of the recession in 2009, median household net worth for blacks had fallen to $5,677, less than well, about half, less than half, a generation's worth of hard work and progress wiped out. The number for whites, by comparison, went down to 113,149. Overall, from 2007 to 2010, wealth for blacks declined by an average of 31 percent, home equity by an average of 28 percent, and retirement savings by an average of 35 percent. All right. So, um, uh, again, to suggest, as he does in this video, that real estate prices will only ever go up is misleading because a it suggests that there won't be um uh, uh another crisis and and as i've been covering here uh repeatedly we're headed towards one and all the numbers show that it's going to be worse than what happened in 2008 but then it also is a suggestion that even if without a recession uh, as the work of so many others, Diedrich uh, Muhammad, uh, Derek Hamilton, and many others have pointed out that home ownership 
uh, the, the fairness and accuracy in reporting. All of these people for years have pointed out home ownership does not equate to uh, wealth for black people. Uh, and outside of a recession that we just discussed here involves everything from, as I just said a moment ago, the fact of blackness reduces the value in home. The fact of blackness of a neighborhood reduces the value of home. The the uh, uh, absence of uh, 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 capital from uh, uh, um, uh, inheritance or banks, uh, it, all of this inhibits home ownership and then the value of those homes once uh, home ownership is, is, is uh, acquired. So for him to suggest, oh, and then lastly, the reason these retail, the, 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 the uh, 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 real estate market is going up now is because of all this investment from private equity groups like BlackRock who are buying up properties all over the place, inflating their value so that they can rent to those who can afford it and push out those who can't. So everything he's saying here may start with some sort of accuracy and a basis, but gets reframed out of reality so quickly uh, that it makes his, what he's saying here uh, ultimately useless if it's supposed to be something that's going to help people understand economics or or or, or the black condition. Well, well anyway, to your, to, to your point, the, the people who 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 were pushed who are being pushed out of the cities like DC and others uh, own their home. To his point, and they're still getting pushed out of their of the homes that they supposedly own that the bank doesn't. Who pushes them out? Only only the homeowner can push themselves out of the home. Well, if you home, if they actually own the home, then they wouldn't push themselves out. But it's the banks that push them out. So the banks hey. own the home. Secondly, it, you know, I haven't. I, I, I live in DC. Um, the the price of my home has gone up twenty percent. The the value of my home has gone up twenty percent in the past five years. I've done nothing to it to enhance it in those past five years, except have white people move in all around me. That's so it. I'll just leave it at that. That's all it takes. <laughs> That's all it takes. Congratulations, brother. Thank you. I, I do my best. <laughs> we were denied. As you well know, you know, you're a historian yourself. Freedman's Bank, March now 3rd. Here we go. Here we go. After the Civil War, we were given 40 acres, which is a pilot program, Field Action 15. Then we worked that so hard, we were given a mule, February 1865. The next month, Lincoln creates a bank called the Freedman's Bank to domicile our savings, teaches about money. So Abraham Lincoln, it, 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 on the occasion of our being free from enslavement, thought the most important thing he could do was to teach us about the free enterprise system and capitalism and ownership. And Lincoln was killed the next month. <laughs> Roland, Frederick Douglass. All right, all right. That's why they killed him. Hold up, hold up. I can't, I, when, I, when he started down this path, I was like, son. You can't be serious, son. That's a barbershop. So let's let's that let's talk about that's this that barbershop for a second. Logic. <laughs> so so my 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 buddy, my ace, Marissa Baradaron, even though you know she might have forgotten that friendship <laughs> temporarily. I get that bag, brother. Got to get that bag, but she did the work. I don't care. Get the bag, Marissa, because you did the work. So you left us the work. It may not be represented accurately in some of these interviews you've given recently or or elsewhere, but you did the work and you've left us a, a, a body of work that we can refer back to. So I did. I went back and grabbed this and, and revisited this section uh, in her discussion of the Freedmen's Bank. Now, first of all, I just want to start off by saying uh, uh, I talk a little bit about it in my own work, but hers here really lays it all out. The broader argument summarized is that uh, uh, and I quoted it. It just it just lost its reference in in, in one of the edits in in my book. I quoted that that instead they got a bank. They want black people wanted freedom. Instead they got a bank, and that comes from her book because the overall thesis of her book, uh, however people want to interpret it, is that banking does not help, and it has long a long history of being reported as not helping black people. So. So from from Bryant's already flawed premise that this was done by Lincoln to help black people, uh, it was already understood from jump that this wouldn't be the case. So as she writes here. So our, first of all, go everybody should go back and instead of listening to Bryant on Lincoln, we should go back and read Lerone Bennett's Forced into Glory and get the clearer picture on what Lincoln was really up to. But for the specifics here of the Freedmen's Bank. 
Marissa Broderon writes, quote, instead of land, freed slaves got rights that they could not use due to their economic and political status at the bottom rung of society. So that would be one point I would always want to highlight. The rights, uh, nominal rights, nominal whatever mean nothing if you don't have political power uh, uh, to, 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 to exercise it. And I would argue even in, against what she said here, economic, there is no economic power without political power. Money is valueless if you don't have political power. Even in the white world, the Hunt family used to bicker with the Rockefellers all the time. And Hunt was like, I got way more money than them, but they have all the political connections. And so even they understand that. Uh, anyway, she continues. Black pe They, black people that is, also got a savings bank, which was another form of diversion that would be repeated in the next century. In fact, the most tangible and long lasting but historically overlooked aspects of the Freedmen's Bureau was the bank it created. Even President Johnson, Andrew that is, who voted to repeal the Freedmen's Bureau and opposed every aid measure directed at blacks, including schools and job training, left the bank alone and never uttered a word of protest over it. So Johnson, who was often credited or discredited for coming in after Lincoln and reversing all the good that Lincoln had done, maintained the first thing Lincoln did here in terms of the Freedmen's Bank because he, because everybody understood uh, that this is not a path to, to help anyone. So as Bryant just says there in the video, Lincoln wanted to teach black people financial literacy and the value and the wonders of capitalism and banking to help them mature and blah, 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 blah. That was part of the mythology that Baradaran talks explicitly about mm -hmm. going back uh, in her work here. So first of all, she quotes Du Bois uh, as saying that the Freedmen's Bank uh, uh, not only ruined thousands of colored men, but taught to, taught to thousands more a lesson of distrust, which it will take them years to unlearn, end quote. Um, as if I think that we, I would disagree with Du Bois on that. I don't think that's a, a, a something that should be unlearned. Uh, a healthful distrust is, is necessary. She continues, um, and I'm just skimming for the sake of time and, uh, uh, and summarizing here, but she continues talking about the Freedmen Bureau Bank that the purpose of a savings bank, again, not an investment bank, which is where banks make money that they can return to their investors. A savings bank doesn't do that. It's just, a, it was designed specifically for whites and others to just teach the basics of banking, the basics of capitalism, and in this case, specifically to tell black people uh, to as do you be used as a diversion to keep black people from organizing politically mm -hmm. and thinking that they could save some money and buy land, which had already been promised and granted to whites. Right. That, they, that is, and, politically, they gave the land to whites and then told black people, you save your money and then maybe you can buy that land from them. Yeah. That is a core feature she describes in detail in this book. Uh, um, so the purpose of the savings bank was to hold money instead of growing it through lending. The charter of the Freedmen's Bank was almost a copy of the New York saving, New York City Savings Bank Charter. These banks were usually charitable institutions meant to teach working men the lessons of thrift, industry, and care for the future, end quote. That's what they're there for. So he's saying the same thing. We're going to teach you, what, what we're going to tell you we're teaching you thrift and industry and care for the future, and all we're doing is making sure you can never advance by definition of the project, you can never advance, certainly collectively, because as what she says here, she describes that she says ultimately the Freedmen's Freedmen Bureau Bank was uh, ultimately nothing more than uh, uh, a heavily, uh, uh, a magnificently constructed, highly regarded and heavily advertised piggy bank. That's what the Freedmen's Bureau Bank was. Okay, continuing mm -hmm. quickly. The charter of the bank also made clear that its purpose was to safeguard deposits and invest them in low risk treasury notes and other U.S. securities. That was the initial point of the bank. But what happened to the bank? Just very quickly, what happened to the bank is it went from it was taken over by some scandalous folks who used their relationship with Congress to change the bank from a savings bank to an investment or speculation, a speculative bank, and to, to, to create the wealth for its owner and owners 
not the people who had invested. That is the, the black people who were deposited with little savings they had, with few pennies they had, uh, through quote unquote productive use, through put it into productive use through lending. The Freedmen's Bank was purposefully set up as a savings bank, a teaching institution rooted in a paternalistic and condescending mission of instructing blacks in the way of thrift and capitalism. But the bank left out the most important part of capitalism, the part where capital is able to grow and multiply through credit. By not lending to depositors, the Freedmen's Bank was counterfeit capitalism from its inception. By not lending to depositors. So you put By your money in the bank the black people. and you can't even get and you can't even get money out of your own bank because they took the money and gave it to their investment friends and the investment banks so that they can take your money. invested in the railroads, right. created a railroad company, invested in railroads, lost the money, mm -hmm. brought in Frederick Douglass, tries to save it. And then he ends up going to Congress and said it has to be shut down because you all uh, would not you all let it get taken over. You didn't protect it uh, and you turned it over to have done to it what was done. Um, but but there's an important point that that, that Baradaran makes here about what was done that, that is so perfectly relevant to what Bryant is doing. Because remember, as I just argued, Bryant is indirectly supporting the growth through mythology of this housing bubble mm -hmm. by saying real estate only ever goes up. He just literally ignored what happened. He literally just ignored like what twice happened. in the last 15 years. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Right. But but so she says here, um, long story short, Baradaran continues, without their knowledge or consent, the freedmen's deposits were being used to finance what was essentially the first post post war that is post civil war asset bubble. That is an investment in railroads. Meanwhile, the well-meaning Freedmen's Bureau and bank officials were providing financial education to freedmen on the importance of thrift and avoiding all gambling and speculation. So while black people are being told, again, it's the same thing. Black people, stop being irresponsible. Stop spending on this. Save your money. Invest. Buy real estate. Don't get into speculative con games. Meanwhile, that's all that these people are doing. Mm -hmm. And by, and, and I haven't even, you know what, I didn't, you know, maybe I, I, I didn't even think of it this way. Maybe I'll do this for an, a, an ex, another discussion or a part two, but next door by going public, I'm wondering to what extent it opens itself up to the speculative investment of, of, of Wall Street. I mean, that's, that's part of the game. So there, there would, I would, I'm assuming there would have to be some speculative investment Absolutely. in, in this area of the economy, this, this app social neighborhood area of the economy and it too could collapse by the way i don't know uh um i don't know the details of the landis corporation that that they're ultimately talking about here with the with the rent to own thing but uh, uh it's a similar kind of thing the 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 propaganda is is today telling poor black people to be thrifty responsible uh, uh get into programs for financial literacy and rent to home rent to own programs that are boosting this housing bubble that is sure to collapse. And even if it doesn't, even when it doesn't, is sure his, it has been proven historically repeatedly to not benefit black people, even individually, much less collectively, uh, just because of the anti-blackness involved in, in the value of these, these properties. So she goes on, so successful were the turns on speculation after 1867 that the bank initiated a propaganda campaign to draw out more deposits. So what did they do? Just like we've been saying with crypto, with this stuff, they send out more people, more ads, more promotion, more celebrity, get out there and get a, get, you know, invest your money, get, buy crypto, get a house and you'll be good. Within, and then I'll stop here with, with Baradaran, but uh, she says here, within a few years, that, that is within a few weeks, the bank's doors were shut down. She's talking about the demise after, after Douglas's failed attempt to save it. Uh, uh, once he realized what had happened, he realized that, 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 that all the money was being speculatively gambled away. Um, uh, within a few weeks, the bank's doors were shut for good on June 29th, 1874, leaving 61,131 depositors without access to nearly $3 million in deposits. More than half of accumulated black wealth disappeared through the mismanagement of the Freedman Savings Bank. 
So just like these parallels we just showed with the housing, half of the black wealth got wiped out through a uh, scandalous, uh, 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 shady investment and speculation. And that's in, in, in a new way, what, what Bryant and, 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 uh, and Roland Martin are, are promoting here. And those were um, and those were black yeah. people who who were who were educated. That's and right. Most of whom were financially literate and did all of the things that were they were supposed to do, thrift and all of that. You know, one of the, you know, and of course they used uh, back in the the Freedmen's Bureau days and the Freedmen's Bank days, they used a very popular black person, uh, Frederick Douglass, and now they're using a very popular black person, uh, two popular black people, uh, you know, Jay Z and Will Smith. And un unlike those two, though. Um, uh douglas was w way more invested in the community uh and certainly much more knowledgeable about how things worked and and and, and i just i wanted to peep something real quick that he said because he started quickly, out quickly frederick douglas I, i'm sorry just but quickly frederick mm -hmm. douglas got in thinking he was helping and right once that's what he i'm realized saying the scam got out yeah that's what i'm saying his intentions he had i don't he see had them more getting out intentions. yeah i'm seeing they have right. more impure more he had more impure intentions that's what i'm saying unlike right. them right uh, and, 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 and he, but he started off talking about 40 acres and a mule. He started off talking about the land. And then that, to your point, he started going into the banking piece. So, so, but he, he missed his own point. The, the value is in the land. It's always been in the land. As you said, they gave the land to the white people and they gave the money to the black people. But, you know, so, so it's still the same thing, but the land is the, is, is what's most valuable, not, not the currency, not the money. Um, so that's the piece. Thank that you he, for that reminding me out. that because she goes, she explains that even that that propaganda, those ads were literally saying that black people they had pictures of 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 a of a, of a successful black person who saved their money and were able to buy a piece of that land, and it said, "See, that you they can gave do the to same white people. thing <laughs> that they gave to white people through po political power, right? Right through land grants." Mm -hmm. And there's that funny, that I always think of it, that, that Tom Cruise movie before he divorced, what's her name? Uh, the, 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 what's her name? Demi Moore. She, no, she's a more famous actress now. Okay, what's her name? That's the only one I know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they were in this movie together where they show this. They show them and it's like they, they, they have the white people line up and then they, I think they literally shoot a gun off and it's like run and go whoever can get to the land first gets it. The sooner. Uh, and, exactly. You, 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 you and, and kill whatever native is there, you know, kill, mm -hmm. you know, whoever's there and it's yours. Uh, but black people, they were saying, no, you, you save your money and then maybe you'll find one of these white folks who will sell you a portion of what we just gave them for free. Um, if you can save up now, I mean, you just got to, you know, put your pennies away. Uh, and then when people start to realize that, you know, there's really no interest on a savings account. And, you know, by then the, 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 before you catch up to the propaganda, the money's gone. The land, as you point out, is already gone. Um, and even even to so your anyway, point too, yeah. the, the people, financial people, will tell you that savers. They say something like savers are losers. Anyway, they always talk about that. The fin they say if you if if you're going to save your money, you might as well invest it. You might as well just put it in an investment. But they they don't they don't advise saving at all. The the people who are into finance. No, of course not, because they know they need to they need they need to flip it. And if you Absolutely. if you keep it under your mattress, they can't flip it. They can't risk it. Any, so anyway, just come back to this a little bit. In order to save the bank, he put ten thousand dollars of his own money in the bank in 1865 to try to save it and try to run the bank. Unfortunately, it was game and it closed in 1874. It's not like we got the memo on money and free enterprise and screwed it up. We never got the memo. So it's what we don't know that we don't know this killing is what we think wow. we know. It's not like somebody gave us a memo on free enterprise and we messed it up. We keep talking about Tulsa, Oklahoma, as if it is really Wall Street. No, it was. It didn't produce capital. It didn't. It didn't uh, issue debt. Uh, they, they didn't uh, uh, provide venture capital like Will Smith and Jay Z are doing right now. Uh, there's no. There was no. They weren't exploitative. There was no. Exactly. <laughs> of, of, of they weren't serious. They were exploitative. exploitative. Exactly. And anyone who hasn't Only seen it, please community. go look at our videos on Black well, Wall Street. This, this, is, this is this is this is total normal. nonsense. We want to call it Black Wall Street. This is how messed up our situation is. That should have been the case in every community in America. So John, but, when you, so John, when you when, again, so when when she says credit counseling is not what it would take low low income renters to homeowners, well, the we'll the, 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 the reality is this. That's John, on his video. I don't know uh, what that voice is. Yeah. She probably telling him it was some BS or something. Hey, <laughs> let, let's just again walk people through. If you right now have a credit score of 500 and you're going to have a much 
higher interest rate if you try to get try to get you a mortgage. Right. So you should. But if you doing with five hundred score, but if you right work with through credit counseling, what Operation Hope does, and move mm. that to seven hundred, that changes the interest rate Home on run. the mortgage. So actually, the credit counseling does help you because if you can go, go ahead. Yeah, and there's nothing that changes your life more than God or love than moving your credit score 120 points. Wow. Right? I mean, God, not, love, and a credit score, credit score, boy, I tell you. <laughs> my mother's not black. She's green. My mother worked wow. at the hey. hourly job. So hey. not only was Again, that tweet by her incorrect about my life, which I just mentioned. Hundreds of studies have already just proven that. Hourly job. She'll never and be green to them. Seven homes. Seven. Because her credit score is to a point where she cannot be. If you have a credit score of 800, even 750, no one's going to tell you no for that's, anything. That's, 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 by that's, the way, all of the hold up, hold up, hold up, is, hold up. Hold up. I don't mind, I don't want to put too much of my business out there. I I know personally for a fact that is false. I'm saying I'm pretty much I, every black person, pretty much any black person who has a seven, over 700 score would tell you that that's false. I, again, the black people who I got turned home, down for an iPhone with a 750 plus score, never mind a home. That is false. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Asa, Asa Hilliard related the, the late great Asa Hilliard related related a story uh, years ago, about how he and a bunch of other PhDs were trying to go and get money to to from a bank to start schools, and they all had a start a school, and they all had A one credit, all of them A one credit. They couldn't get it. That's all. It's it's just false. He's now, if you wanted to go get a car, you want to go get a car, or something like that. You could. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, in fact, the, the 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 one of the famous spots around here, I'm sure you know about it. Uh, the, with this well, your job is your credit. Your job is your credit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, bro, check it out. I actually went there and got a car one time, bro. They they wanted to charge me 25 percent interest. They wanted to charge me 25 percent wow. interest. Brother, if you just go get your credit counseling and get that number up to 800, you that's your fault. You don't have yeah. an 800 plus credit score. That's clear. That's your fault. No, because you don't have. have you I don't did have, have the one. right mentality. <laughs> I did right. have one, but you don't have that right mentality. It, it, you're right. a spectator, sure, you're right. brother. You're a spectator. <laughs> you see a check casher next to a payday loan lender, next to a rental home store, next to a title lender, next to a liquor store and a pawn shop. Andrew mm. Young said that that to live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the definition of slavery. So yes, credit score. Half of black folks have a credit score below 620. Fact, half of us. So while we think the bank may be discriminating against us on race, and maybe they are, maybe the likelihood maybe. they don't even need to go that far. Your credit score does not approve allow you to buy a home it's at not a price. It's credit at score, man. You can get a, a, a homeboy shopping network mortgage, as you're saying. That you know. Uh, uh, t- uh, so our African ancestors, that was the issue? Which, which, which yeah, the low credit rating? They, they, they didn't have any credit. That was the house will make your wallets explode. But if you can get your credit score rolling up to 680 through Operation yeah. Hope Coaching, which gets, which, cre- which raises credit scores 54 points in six months, 120 points in 24 months, you get your credit score up to 680, your mortgage goes down, to, I don't know, probably 7% in the current environment. You get your credit up score up to 710, the mortgage is 3%. That's like them giving you money. So, so, so again, that the is, person that, listening, so if you increase your credit credit score, to go from 7% to 3% means, again, how much you're paying on that mortgage, you're paying less. I, I, I want to bring this, the, so in, that's, that's in, I wild. do want to get your take on this here because this is what the story says, that the company will purchase a house, rent to a client. So basically, you as a client, you're moving into a home that you will have, you work with you two years to buy. Now, it says Landis is going to uh, uh, charge a fee on top of the value of the property at the time of its initial purchase. How so much? We don't know what that, that fee is. Yeah, we don't know what that fee is. is. But what, we don't. But what this is saying yeah, we don't. is, what they're basically saying is, but he said we're going to acquire the home. We're going to give you yeah. two years and work with you to get your finances in order, credit score improved, for you to be able to buy the home. I don't know of many other programs that, that will allow you to a sense if you're low income, to move into a home, we're going to help you try to buy it, and then you have a shot to buy it, 
after two years, and then the two years passes, they might give you that more is time. the exact definition of predatory lending. Again, That's exactly what happened in 2008. Well, yeah, up no, to 2008. It's, it's not That's it's exactly it. Clicks on the internet is what it is. I mean, it's just it's it's just I mean, it just created this firestorm of conversation. It reminds me of the two hobos. This is a Jesse Jackson story, Roland. The two hobos got kicked off the train. They're upset about it for non payment. One hobo said, man, I'm so upset. I think I'm going to buy this here trade. The other hobo said, yeah, I'm upset too. I'm going to sell it to you. Let that sink in for a minute. Both of them so broke they can't pay attention. They're talking past each other about something about a, a situation that nobody is paying them any attention on. The train is gone. The train in our neighborhood of home ownership is leaving, and we're having ridiculous debates. Uh, gentrification, which is a conversation that you know we should have at some point, it's really just a movement to middle class values. Why are we buying wow. uh, the house with the tree in it in our neighborhood? Buy it, rehab it, rent it, and own it. Why aren't we? Buy it, rehab it, rent it, or, or, or buy it, rehab it, and live in it. And watch that equity go up for ourselves. That's a whole Black other Rock conversation. <laughs> but real estate values are doing nothing but going up. And that's been the case since the beginning of time. So put that issue aside for a moment. To your point, the answer is yes. Back in the days of It's Kimmich. a very that's unique it. program. And I'm talking about somebody. Theoretically, Roland, I'm their competitor. I'm sorry. Theoretically, they're my competitor. Theoretically, I could say that capital that should have gone to me, I'm the largest in the country as a minority, went to uh, went to this company through, through two notable uh, investors. I'm not saying that, Roland. I'm saying this. He's applauding Bravo. his competitor. We need as, we, his we need as many people out here being trying to help in the same come way. Up as possible, mm -hmm. as long as it's honorable, ethical, it's, com it's done in complete plain sight. This seems to be very transparent. I, I actually don't know many programs that does this. I would have done it differently. I would have. He just you know, said we don't know what the fee is that they charge. How is that transparent? The services mm -hmm. have been more transparent. Is a credit is a credit counseling free? Mine is, and all that kind of stuff. But I do like they do say, Roland, it's all up front. Here's what the price of the house is going to be. Here's what the fee is that we're going to charge you. Up front. What is the fee? Here's what the predetermined purchase know. price is going to be two years after. Mm -hmm. And if you need more time, we'll give you more time. Now, that's not if what, you don't like wait, the I deal, didn't say they say that. They said that. I, 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 he just added I thought it's been a two years. Uh, but I, from what this they're saying, this is saying, then they say that the rent will be based on their carry. Maybe they said they may give There's you There's an two assumption more here that's going to be also at market. In other words, the rents will be at market rate. But if it's not at market rate and you, you're getting a bad deal, leave. Sure, just leave. <laughs> After you paid two years, yeah, yeah, sounds pretty basic to me. Sounds pretty Charles basic. Charles Bryant, founder of Operation. No, no, sounds no, pretty basic. Keep, keep, keep playing it. Keep playing it. I, this oh. is this is what I was gonna get to earlier. Oh my bad. I hold up, hold up, hold up. I shut it down. Hold up. Yeah. I thought that was it. You got, you got to see on. this. I'll you bring it back up. I'll bring it back up. Hold on a yeah. second. Uh, it's coming. <laughs> I, I should have told you ahead of time, but I think it's, no, it's, it's all good. Considering what you said at the very beginning about um, next door and the racism and stuff. Uh, and the profiling um, that they had been accused of. I think this is important. At market. In other words, the rents will be at market right. rate. But if it's not at market rate and you, you're getting a bad deal. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. And before you play it, so I, I was, so I was, I was, I was, I, I watched it and then, you know, I was kind of doing something else, but I was still listening. And then I was like, well, what the hell is going on? What, what is this? And I looked up and I'm like, what is this? You know, I couldn't understand what was going on because I thought the video was over. But anyway, go ahead. You know what? This is deep because this is my fault because I think I stopped it here myself. I thought well, this was an ad. That's because you, and, you and and I was, enough. I, it, 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 and I, I it was is an ad. It is an ad. Okay, my bad. Uh, oh, oh, my one fault. of the most stressful days of my life was when this one got out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What happened? They must have heard us talking about him. Hold on. Let me try. Let me try to refresh it real quick. All right. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. One of the most stressful days of my life was when this one got out. Whoa. What's going on? Chased after her as best I could. Kind of fell over and broke my wheelchair. I was able to get back home and make a post. Within about five or so minutes, I had three or four different people coming to the rescue. One woman stopped traffic, just drove her right back to the house for me. It was, it was a very emotional day. 
Over a period of 10 years, my neighborhood went from being almost 98% black to being 98% white. So all of a sudden, oh God, I'm the suspicious looking black man. I posted on next door that I no longer felt comfortable walking in this neighborhood. The response I got was hundreds and hundreds of neighbors oh, wow. offering to walk with me. <laughs> this experience moved me and changed the way I saw humanity. Uh, okay, that, that's all. Door, that, that, I just want to cultivate a kinder world. We oh, want to make sure there that she is. everyone. Oh, your, bo wow. your boys in here too. John, John's in here too. When we started this company, we felt that technology had an important role to play. So gentrification is good together. if you use this app to let folks know that you 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 not the scary black when I found out that's I was last becoming remaining. a father. Right, right. I, wow. What am I going to feed? That was all. That was all. I, I posted. I hey, any other gardeners? No, I was going to wait to see Brian. Soil, okay. seeds, and, equipment, and you know. they came up from everywhere. Wow. Plus, this is so moving and inspirational. As human beings, we want a sense of safety and anything that yes. gives us that sense of connection. You drive through a neighborhood and you see yeah. houses and bricks, but really what you have is people, business owners, and entrepreneurs. We know that the locals wow. are what... All right, business owners and entrepreneurs. So, but but that that's perfect because uh, the 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 one other piece that I had from this was you know um, uh, this is Operation Hope. This is his his business's website uh, and their mission statement. Our focus is financial dignity and inclusion. We equip mm -hmm. young people and adults with the financial tools and education to secure a better future. No, no, no. But but inclusion. you know. Uh, you know, I just thought it was interesting. Well, white folks to uh, walk with us, walk with us in the neighborhood. A whole bunch of a gang of white folks walking with us. Says, we want inclusion. <laughs> the even, white even folks that now, 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 I've been gentrified. I'm the only one. It was not even black. But, but, the but white I'm folks happy now because I'm your because I'm the only one in my neighborhood. I'm the only one in my. You're nothing but a house nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but these are his partners. This is this is who this black company that is teaching black financial literacy and uplift is partnered with. Absolutely. Um, you know, if, if you just I mean, look at these the just the names, you know, um and what and what he says, if you read a little bit farther, what basically what he's saying the is Dolphins. these the Miami Dolphins. Uh, th these are the people that uh, Harley Davidson, who <laughs> invest in his company and help mm -hmm. him. No, 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 perform. no, 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 no. He did that all because he was financially literate, brother. That's how. That's how. He oh, got, that's right. I'm sorry. That's, Thank you for the clarification. No, no, don't be trying to take away from that, brother. See, that's the problem. We tear each other down, brother. You're trying to say that this man is just shilling for the white folks and telling us to do something that he didn't do to get all that money. Come on, and then bro, I'm thinking this is interesting. You got the NFL thinking about mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick and, and the, the San Francisco Nations, specifically, specifically the 49ers. They were like, <laughs> <laughs> we making sure we not brought with Kaepernick, just so you're uh, clear. Look at Walmart, Wells U Fargo, who was US Bank. Wells Fargo. Yeah. Oh, US Bank. But Wells Fargo was, was the one of the main predatory lenders mm -hmm. uh in from 2008. Um the board of directors, you know, this is just, you know, of course you got Andy Young, mm -hmm. uh, like the anti Dr. King he civil been rights leader, ever since, man. Quoting he, King, of course, yeah. Um, and then you got, of course, Bryant, who, who I guess makes it black owned, but maybe. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, I yeah. mean, black owned companies, man. You got to support them. I mean, yeah. Yeah. all this black folks. All right, but you know, you know, uh, you know, like what's a relative? <laughs> is it his sister? <laughs> Maybe, probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Oh wow! I'm just like this is mm -hmm. this is black, black, black excellence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, man, and that's how they, you know. Um, but you know, he's on. He, I want he's, to, yeah, go ahead. He, well, he's on the board of next door, as you pointed out. But do you know mm -hmm. when he became? Do you know when he became a member of the board? I don't know. The company that had been accused of racial profiling, they brought him on in o October of 2020. Stop playing. So he's brand new like that. Brand new, new shit. <laughs> 
So we right on time. With financial, we partner with financial institutions, corporations, and municipal agencies and community organizations to deliver hope inside our award-winning model of community uplift that has allowed us to scale and sustainably package and deliver financial dignity and economic empowerment programming in communities around the country at no cost to the client. The client experience at Hope Inside is rooted in empowerment, the personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching. So in other words, those companies we just highlighted fund him to give uh, this brand of financial literacy and counseling to the very people that a either owe debts to the people who are funding him or who they hope will eventually owe debt to the people who are funding him. And then he can go on to Roland Martin and talk about black media and black empowerment and black financial literacy and black home. I mean, and it, I mean, it, and totally distort the history is I think we've outlined here fairly well. I, that, 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 anyway, that video, I, I, you know, I mean, is just tragic to me. Uh, um, but is exam exemplifies in one instance so much of the mythology that continues to permeate these discussions and, and I think wildly limit where we can go and what we think we can do and what we should be doing. So that's it. That's all I had, man. I, I that 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 concludes my portion of, of, of today's discussion. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, give you a chance to respond. I'm gonna definitely, uh, you know, risk looking at this chat real quick. <laughs> yeah, look at the chat, uh, and see, see if, if we got any, anything. Let's 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 entertain. Any comments, I, mean, I don't have questions. Much. Yeah, I don't have much to add uh, I, I, other than uh, let's, let's leave with the chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he even had a black dude named Mandela. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I <laughs> right. saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Uh, I just was not. I, I was just trying to let the 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 aesthetics wash over everyone naturally um uh john hope bryant is green on his mother's side that's funny <laughs> that's funny uh a veritable rogues gallery of corporations yeah man i mean so yeah wells fargo that's what i'm saying that's yeah. what i'm saying primary that's what us I'm saying. us us your bank. power well, yeah, us U.S. Bank is 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 also um, they also deal with uh, the people that have uh, SNAP and all those things like that. They that's usually that's you at least at least in the D.C. area. I know for sure that's that's the bank that they deal with, and they have you know the high rates, all that kind of stuff. So, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> what are they entrepreneurial? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> He's an entrepreneur, <laughs> but he's got all those all those corporate backers. You I know, mean, that's it, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Well, well, that's that's pretty much the grift. I mean, if if you know, if for people who want to get the grift, they 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 uh, they they present it, they package it as black empowerment. But when you just pull back the curtains, it's always you know Walmart, it's always you know Amazon, and all the the, the usual suspect, the usual you know murderers row, you know of of corporatists that are behind them. And of course they know that and they and they seize upon, you know, this aspiration that black people have to 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 be great and to have, you know, you know, black excellence and all that. Uh, but of course they usually just uh they use a Trojan horse in order to do it. And it's usually people like this. And they talk strong, you know, and they and they sound like they're for the people and for empowerment. And people like Roland Martin, as we pointed out you know, a long time ago, you know, his main thing is he he was upset because the white people didn't uh give him uh the money or the advertising dollars and things like that. So even though he posits himself as a black owned company. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Uh, um, and it's the same, you know, he's calling rate, you know, uh, his company is operation hope, but it's, it's the very, it's very much the Jesse Jackson operation push version of civil rights. You know, we're going to go to corporations, get them to give us money and we'll go to the people come down. and 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 promise to be offering them something uh, uh something of value and it's um it's it's pretty gross uh uh so um yeah so hobos <laughs> anyway